The Conversion of the Jews As a result of the preaching of these two holy prophets, their miraculous resurrection and ascension into heaven, a remarkable occurrence will come to pass. A considerable number of Jews will be converted to Christ. Blessed Theophylact the Bulgarian writes concerning this, Elias will come as a forerunner of the second coming and bring to faith in Christ all the Jews who will prove obedient, leading, as it were, to their paternal inheritance those who had fallen away from him. This statement is based on the following prophecies. 1. Behold, I will send you Elias the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the child and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Malachi 4, 5-6 2. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are saved of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Isaiah 10, 20-21 3. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Romans 9, 27, referring to Isaiah 10, 22. 4. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of compassion. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn him as one mourns for one's only son, and they shall be in bitterness for him as one is in bitterness for one's firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadadramon in the valley of Megiddo. Zechariah 12, 10 to 11. 5. For if you, converted Gentiles, have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and, against nature, grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much easier will it be to graft these natural branches, the Jews who will become converted, back on to their own tree? Lest you be wise in your own conceits, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers. A hardening has overcome part of Israel until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. Romans 11, 24-25 The conversion of the Jews to Christ will evoke from Antichrist the most intense malice towards all Christians. Then they will be made to suffer the great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Matthew 24, 15 to 21. For it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Revelation 13, 7. The salvation of a small remnant of the faithful will be dependent only on the shortness of Antichrist's reign. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days shall be shortened. Matthew 24, 22. The world rule of Antichrist will last three and one half years. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the setting up of the abomination of desolation, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Daniel 12, 11. This is the same as the length of time given for the reign of Antichrist in the Revelation. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Revelation 13.5 No human power whatever will be able to stand up against Antichrist. Only the Lord himself, coming a second time in all his glory, will vanquish him. Then the terrible judgment by Christ and the end of the world will come. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles for him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. 
These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were slain with a sword that issues from the mouth of him who is mounted on the horse. Revelation 19, 20-21 And the devil who had led them astray was hurled into the fiery lake of burning brimstone with the beast and the false prophet. And they were tormented day and night, forever and ever. Revelation 20, 10 The revelation of John the theologian, as well as the prophecy of Daniel and of the apostle Paul, reveals to the world that the son of ruin will be not only a political leader, but also the prophet of a new religion with himself as its deity, as the God incarnate, who was promised to the Jews by the ancient prophets. The triumph of Judaism will be great, for there will be the command to celebrate the Jewish Sabbath and follow the Jewish law. The countless sects, like sheep without a shepherd, will gather to Antichrist as to their own pastor in the rebuilt temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Here the self-styled Christ will receive divine worship, seated on the throne of David. At the same time, the Christian sanctuary will be closed and in it will be placed an idol of Antichrist, a lifelike speaking statue. This was called the abomination of desolation by the prophet Daniel. From that time on, the bloodless sacrifice of the Eucharist will cease on earth. Reading the book of Revelation, we see an angel crying in Christian lands to those who have apostatized from the true church of Christ. The angel reminds all of the creation of the one who created all things, who became flesh and lived amongst us, whose glory was seen, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, the Son who descended to earth so that, because of his worthiness, all can receive grace. But people by that time will have turned their backs on grace and will have already fallen into neglect of the holy mysteries and will willingly become attracted by the so-called signs of the false Christ and false prophets. When the offerings cease in the church on earth, when all these things come to pass, the second coming of the Lord will follow immediately. The Lord himself warns in the Holy Gospel, Be aware of this, that, if the householder had known at what time the thief was coming, he would have been awake and watching and would not have left his house to be broken into. You must likewise be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Luke 12, 39-40 Truly no one in that time will suspect that the world is coming to an end, or will imagine in what hour the Son of Man will come, and so mankind will be taken unaware. The plagues caused by the two prophets will have ceased, and the accusers will have vanished from the earth those two bothersome prophets who chastised the followers of Antichrist, warning the merrymakers of their fate. Progress will have reached an apex, and the fight against illnesses and disease will be reaching such an advanced stage that it will seem as if even death would soon be conquered. Then, suddenly the vessels of wrath will be poured out upon the followers of Antichrist, Sores and boils will afflict those bearing the mark of the beast, and the waters of the earth will be turned to blood. Where then will the great physicians and scientists be? Where will the preachers of materialism be? No help will be found, not in progress, not in books, and not in medicine. When the departure of man from God has reached its extreme limit during the reign of the son of perdition, this putrefying illness will fall upon his followers, the last Sodomites, just as suddenly as destruction fell upon the first Sodomites. The Gospel warns, As it was in the day of Lot, they, the Sodomites, ate, drank, bought, sold, planted, and built. But on that day when Lot departed from Sodom, fire and brimstone rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So it will be on that day, when the Son of Man is revealed. Luke 17, 28-30 The end of Antichrist and his followers will be terrible. 
We read in the book of Revelation that, on the great day of the Lord, Satan and Antichrist and his deputy will dispatch demons to call all the rulers of the world together for a great battle. When this great army has been gathered at Armageddon, the seventh wrath of God will pour forth onto the earth, a great storm of lightning, thunder, and explosions, and an earthquake of unimaginable proportions, an earthquake so great that islands will vanish and mountains will be leveled. In an instant, all man's pride will crumble to rubble and vanish. His great manufacturing centers of culture, art, and learning, all the things which man worshipped in place of God. The Last Judgment After this will begin the dread judgment. The Savior frequently taught about the last, universal judgment over humanity, both in parables and in discourses that were unmistakably clear in meaning. He said, The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matthew 16, 27 The Lord said similar things about the last judgment in many other places. In accordance with the teachings of their Lord, the apostles proclaimed that the Son of God will pass judgment over the whole world. St. Paul says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10 In another place the apostle writes to the Corinthians, Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. In his epistle to the Romans, St. Paul teaches that, at the last judgment, God will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing Seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, for there is no respect of persons with God. Romans 2, 5-11 From this clear evidence in Holy Scripture, as well as from many other similar places, we can find out about the last universal judgment of humanity and can tell to some extent what it will be like. At this judgment will be judged all people, without exception, who have lived from the beginning of the world until the end, both evil and good, not only Christians, but unbelievers also. This judgment will be final. It will decide the fate both of men and of the fallen angels, whom God has reserved unto the judgment of the great day. Epistle of St. Jude, verse 6. The judge of the world will be the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he who announced the good tidings of God's law and perfectly fulfilled it, who gave himself, taking the form of a slave in his divine outpouring, and redeemed the human race through his sufferings and death, will appear in all the glory of his divine majesty and judge all men. The Lord who knows all the secrets of men's hearts will judge not only the deeds which we have done during the course of our earthly life, but also our words and our thoughts, intentions, and desires. All our most hidden thoughts will then be revealed and laid open. The judgment will be righteous and impartial. The Lord will reward each according to his works. To some he will say, Come, Ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 34 Others will hear this terrible sentence, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 41 Then, says St. Ephraim the Syrian, all of humanity will find itself between the kingdom and condemnation between life and death, between joy and necessity, and all will stand before the judgment seat, 
looking downwards and not daring to raise up their eyes. All will be interrogated and strictly tried, especially we who have lived in carelessness, and seeing all this will start thinking over all their deeds. Each person will see his own deeds, bad and good. All those whose deeds are good will joyfully draw near to the judgment seat in the hope of obtaining a crown. If anyone who has serious sins on his conscience leaves this life without repenting, he will become sick at heart when he sees his sins standing before him, accusing him and condemning him, and he will say, Why did I, the poor one, not struggle with them, but wasted time playing games, and so became myself a plaything? Why did I not repent before him who takes away the sin of the world? but spent my years in delusion. What am I to do? The time for repentance has passed by. While pondering over this within themselves, they will hear the awful voice of the judge, who will cry out and say, Show your deeds and receive your reward. At that hour all the orders of humanity will come forward, bishops, priests, deacons, and all the orders of the church, as the apostle said. They will rise each in his own rank, every man in his own order, 1 Corinthians 15, 23, to render homage to the Lord. Then the rulers, the wise and the rich, will shake with fear, because the hour has come in which everyone's deeds will become known both to angels and to men, and each will reap what he has sowed. After each one has been tried before men, and all dominions and powers have been abolished, and all God's enemies have been placed under his feet. Then, at last, as the Lord said, he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep at his right hand, but the goats on his left. Matthew twenty-five thirty-two to 33 Then the parents will be separated from children, fathers from sons, mothers from daughters, friends and relatives from each other. Then false spouses who have not kept their bed undefiled will be separated. But I will pass by much in silence in my description, for fear restrains me from telling about this. Sermon on the Honorable and Life-Creating Cross and on the Second Coming by St. Ephraim the Syrian. Eternal Blessedness an eternal torment. After the final and decisive sentence has been passed at the universal judgment, the eternal blessedness of the righteous in the kingdom of heaven will begin, as well as the eternal torments of sinners in hell, a place of all woes, sufferings and punishments, where there is only disorder, terror and confusion, where there is no joy of any kind nor any hope whatever of any alleviation. Eternal separation from God and deprivation of all God's gifts, tormenting pangs of conscience, eternal disgrace and shame, reproaches, mockery and cursing from those who had been drawn into sin by the condemned, the onslaught of demons, living together with them and with all the condemned, will bring about that gnashing of teeth, Matthew 22, 13, which the Savior mentions. For the righteous, on the contrary, a great reward is prepared. They will be led into the most perfect and beautiful place, which in Holy Scripture is called paradise, heaven, and the heavenly kingdom. Here the righteous will enjoy the direct vision of God, seeing Him face to face. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. This means that the glory and majesty of the Lord will become accessible for the righteous. In God they will see all that is most majestic, elevated, sacred, and perfect, and will take the impression of the majesty of God and the Son of God directly upon themselves. In this contemplation, they will find complete satisfaction for the mind, will, and heart, and an inexhaustible source of eternal enjoyment and blessedness. Eternal joy and eternal gladness will be their heritage. Contemplating God, the
the righteous will see the whole world in its proper form, will fathom the mystery of our redemption, and will enjoy the fullness and perfection of divine knowledge. As the Apostle says, Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. 1 Corinthians 13.12 Beloved of God, they themselves will come to love God with a most holy love. The righteous in heaven will be like the angels of God. Then the thousands of angels will receive men into their midst as brothers, and will share with them their feelings of love and thanksgiving towards God. Each one of the righteous will likewise be united in a close and unbreakable union of love with all the saints. They will all make up the one flock of Christ, or one family, united by pure love. The terrible scourges of the human race, the spirits of malice which have brought men to death and hell, will receive their reward for having killed each and every person in the most torturous way. They offered the cup of murderous poison both to the innocent child and to the old man crowned with virtues, so that, after their death, they could gain power over their souls as battle trophies in their war with God. However, this torment will not continue eternally. Death, where is thy sting? Hell, where is thy victory? The seer tells us that death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Revelation 20.13 What happens after that? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20.14 And I heard, says the seer, a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 3. He who lives in the unapproachable light will establish a dwelling place on high where he will dwell together with men. Before, he had revealed himself like a shape in a glass darkly, that is to say, vaguely, scarcely, accessibly, and extremely obscurely. Only the inner voice of the heart had sometimes said that it was he, here with us in the temple, in the holy mysteries of faith, who awaited from us ever newer and newer struggles of faith, hope, and love towards him in victory over ourselves and struggle with sin. But there, on the holy mountain, in the heavenly tabernacle, whose appearance will be capable of drying all tears and filling the heart with hitherto unknown joy in the contemplation of unearthly beauty, of the perfect nature of the heavenly paradise. There the blessed will see God not in obscure figures, but face to face. A single vision of the heavenly flowers, as occurred according to tradition at the burial of the Mother of God, fills one with inexpressible consolation. The sounds of heavenly words and hymns are so wonderful and joyous that it is impossible to compare such a harmony of sounds with earthly music even when performed in the best manner possible. St. Paul, who was once caught up into paradise, bears witness to this. What must a thankful heart experience when it sees the Savior himself and will not ever be separated from the blessed thirsting to contemplate him face to face. Then will be fulfilled that which has been foretold, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21, 4. End of Apostasy and Antichrist Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen.